But I got to run. Uh, John, uh, it looks like John O'Grady's back on the line. John, you there? Yes, sir, I am. Hey, I'm sorry I, I missed you coming into this segment. Uh, uh, John is the president of the AFGE Council 238, representing 9,000 EPA employees, the website AG, AFGE Council 238.org. And uh, uh, John, tell us the situation at the EPA right now. Scott Pruitt is, is he turning this into the Environmental Pollution Agency? Well, either that or the uh, Mining Pollution Agency. Uh, could be a number of things, the Environmental Profit Agency. Um, we have uh, uh, some problems basically with our um, staffing and budget levels. We've gone from 18,100 employees in 1999 to um, uh, about 14,400 today. And our budget, at least as the uh, House has approved it, will be $7.5 billion, which is a budget we had back in... 2006, which today, in today's dollars, should be at least 9.3 billion. Hmm. So, what are, what is it? What are the real world impacts of this? The real world impacts are that um, the agency cannot do its job the way it should. You hear the administration talking about cooperative federalism. The uh, the funny thing about that is we've been doing that for years and years. We work with states and municipalities and tribal authorities. They are our partners nationally in trying to ensure clean air, clean water, clean land. Um, but the uh, Prude administration, the Trump administration, have proposed basically to uh, cut the EPA's budget, cut the EPA staffing, and at the same time cut the money that goes to the states, tribes, and municipalities. So how is cooperative federalism going to work? Yeah, it's not. It's a joke. It's a it's a brand. It's probably something Frank Luntz or, or Grover Norquist came up with. So what can we do? What what can people listening to this program right now do to change the situation? We 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 would like our children to be safe from poisons, and we would like to have clean air and water for ourselves. Frankly, absolutely. So what we need to do is this: we need to write, email, phone, and visit our congressional representatives and our U.S. senators. We have to make it clear to them that. Uh, a clean environment is not a partisan issue. It wasn't a partisan issue until President Reagan came in office. Uh, it's uh, something that we have to go back to our, our society and its values back in the 60s and 70s when we said it's crazy that a river should catch on fire. The Cuyahoga River in Ohio caught on fire over 13 times before people I remember. said, hey, we need to do stuff about this. So and Lake Erie was dead. Yeah. And the lake was dead, and uh, there was valleys filled with drums of spent chemicals. Uh, they built housing developments on places like Love Canal, and we do not want to go yes. back there. And the maddening thing is as we, draw, uh, as we pull back from the climate accord, the Paris Climate Accord, who's taking our place? China and India. And China now right. is reacting to their people's concern over really bad air in places like Beijing. So they're they're getting it while we're kind of going backwards. That doesn't make Oh, sense. they're they're installing Yeah, they're installing more solar than any other country in the world right now. Yes. And who And they and they've declared that uh, Yeah, we're doing nothing. And they've said it's going to be nothing but electric cars after 2030 or 2035. I mean, they they've got China's really moving on this thing. And because Scott Pruitt and Donald Trump and all these guys, because they're in the pockets of fossil fuels, of, of the, of the petro-billionaires, this ain't happening. John O'Grady, it's great talking with you, the president of the uh, AFGE Council 238. Thank you, John. Hey, you're most welcome, and we'd love to be on again. Great. Anytime. Have a great day.